Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Patrick from Vicious Computers and welcome to a brand new video. I took the time to uh, put clothes on in quarantine and uh, get my camera out so we can show you some stuff. Because today it's not just going to be monitor recording, we're actually going to be showing you some stuff in person. So this video is about my overly engineered ESP8266 USB serial flashing device. So I'm going to show you an idea that I have been conceiving for the last week and today I finally went ahead and built it. So without further ado, let's move closer and take a look at what I've got. All right, as I struggle with this new tripod, new camera, and I haven't done this in so long, the first thing I did was I haven't been tethered in so long that I actually dropped and broke my recorder. The basket came separated, but uh, let's start off the video first now that we're at the table with everything. I think it's important to start with the, the why before we get to the how. So I've been doing the, the Sonoff flashing for a long time, flashing Sonoff units with Tasmoda, and I found it was a really big pain in the butt to hold down the button when I was plugging in the USB flashing device and trying to make all that work and be coordinated with it. Because if you're familiar with flashing these things, you have to hold GPIO zero low or ground it as you plug it in and give it power to put it into flashing mode. Then you have to release GPIO zero and then you can program it. And then I just got my Shelly ones today. So I have an, a new type of thing that I need to program. This one doesn't have a button like the Sonoff does. Instead, it just has a pin. So you're going to have to ground that pin and then release it. So the idea that I had was building a device that would let me power on and off and ground GPIO zero easily. And, and that way I don't have to fuss with anything. So I've been ordering parts and waiting for parts for the last week and everything's finally here and I want to go put it together today. And let's talk about what didn't work. So first of all, this is uh, a time that I really wish I had a 3D printer, but I don't. So I just looked on Amazon, looked at things and eyeballed things the best I could and not all of it worked out. So first of all, this didn't work out. I thought it'd be really cool to have one of these like rocker style, like I'm going to launch a nuke type buttons. But unfortunately, uh, the depth of this would have been way too crammed in this case. So I ended up using smaller little push button switches that I actually bought for the star projector project that I haven't made the video on yet. The other thing is I thought it'd be really cool to have RJ45 coming out of the project box. The entire purpose of this being I was originally going to make it modular so that I'd have several different RG, uh, RJ45 connectors that I would have for each unit. So I'd have one for Sonoff. I'd have one for the Shelly's and have one for something else. That way, if I needed different configurations like uh, a pogo pin or a, um, a clip, or whatever you call those things, the alligator clips or whatever I needed, I, and also the pin outs, everything could be pre-built, pre-configured for each unit. And I would just plug in the RJ45 for that unit and be ready to go. That's the same concept I used for this joystick that I built like almost 15 years ago. So when I built this, if you look at the back, this is an RJ45 plug right here. This is one of those really nice Neurotic RJ45s. And this is modular. If I plug in, what I used to do is buy extension cables for GameCube, for Super Nintendo, for Xbox 360, for whatever console I wanted. And I would cut the extension cable, wire it to RJ45 with the right pin out. And this joystick works on every console back in the day. So GameCube, Wii, uh, Super Nintendo, Genesis, PlayStation, Nintendo 64, you name it, you just plug in the right cable and it would pick up automatically what you were playing and this would work for all of them. So I wanted to go with that same concept but it didn't work because the jumper wires are a little bit too big, the, the shielding is too big to fit into the RJ45 connector so I had to shelf this idea and I had to shelf the rocker switch. So what I was left with was the project box USB extension cable, my actual USB flashing device, um, jumper cables, some small button switches, and a terminal strip. So, and, and of course, in the uh, video description, I will have links to everything so you can go on Amazon or something and buy it if you want to build this for yourself. The idea is, the concept is really simple, and now that I've tested it and I can prove that it works, you can build this in different ways. Uh, I think also I will do a real quick diagram for you guys so you can see exactly what's going on with the wiring before we go into the unit. So I'm, I'm going to draw off screen because again, I don't really have 
Let's try to get it on screen as best we can. All right, so there's four pins coming off of our flashing device, right? We have one, two, three, four, and it's gonna be our um, ground. Well, let's see, I'll just follow the pinouts here. So it's uh, our, our positive voltage and then our ground, which is negative voltage, if you want to call it that, our transmit and our receive. Those are the four pins we use for flashing these things. And then up here, I have a terminal strip with five. I'm using five. Because remember, when we're actually flashing these devices, it's going to be our power, our ground, our GPIO zero and the transmit and the receive. Um, and this will be GPIO. You can tell I don't do this too often. Anyways, so positive voltage is coming from the flashing chip straight across and then straight out. No change. Transmit and receive, same thing. Transmit's going straight into the terminal strip and then straight out, receive, straight into the terminal strip, and straight out. Now here's where we got crafty. Um, two buttons on here. One of these controls power to the unit, so I, I don't have to worry about the chip that I'm flashing powering up when I plug this in on USB. We do that by interrupting the ground. We're not touching the positive voltage because you have to have both positive and negative. So we put a, a switch right here all right and then that goes straight out so the first interrupt is a switch between a ground and the terminal strip and by having that switch off black for ground on here is going to interrupt power so therefore if that button is not pressed in when you plug this device in your chip won't power up therefore it won't enter flashing mode it won't power up it won't do anything then off of that same terminal strip we have another wire coming out and this one also has a switch on it. And this switch is then going into that fifth terminal strip and then out. So you can see if this switch is off, there's no power making it to this first terminal header. Therefore, there's no power making it to GPIO zero. So both of these have to be activated to enter flashing mode. So the process, the order of operations, the order of operations is going to be, you can go ahead and depress GPIO zero to ground it and leave your main switch, your first switch unchecked, plug it in, nothing is going to happen yet. As soon as I close this switch, uh, we're gonna enter flashing mode because we're gonna power on the board and we're gonna have GPIO zero grounded. And then after we wait a couple of seconds, we depress the second switch here, which will unground that and let us do our programming. And then when you get done flashing and you have to reboot, all you have to do is press and depress this switch here again. So it makes the entire process super simple, super cool. Now, a little bit about the build. Again, all the parts will be in the description. I just did best I could with what I had. No 3D printer, no great tools. Um, to cut this for the USB, I ended up using a hot knife that I bought my wife a while back when we were doing wedding invitations and doing some cool stuff with that. Buttons, terminal strip, and flashing, the t everything came off Amazon. Uh, this side just used a drill, and for the buttons, I had a drill. Luckily, I had a step bit that was the right size to put these buttons in, and I just kind of um, went with my gut and got it all to work. So the next thing I'm going to do is, off camera real quick, just tidy, these, th th tidy this up a little bit, and then when we come back, what we'll be doing is we'll go over to the computer and actually flash this Shelly one that I finally got my brand new Shelly one. So that's what we're going to be doing here in a few minutes. So I haven't plugged anything in. I haven't done anything. I've got the, the Shelly one wired up here with its proper pin out. By the way, that's a very tight fit for those pins. It's probably worth it to take the time to pry the top off because it would have been much easier. Uh, both buttons are depressed, which means the switches are open right now. And I just want to show you, this would be simulating that you don't have like a nice USB switch like I have where I can turn off and on my USB ports. So I'm just gonna plug this in and you'll see the serial flashing device has powered up 
it is detected. My computer has said, hey, there's something plugged in now. But it, at this point, the actual ESP8266 is not powered up. It's not doing anything. So what we want to do is the white button is going to ground GPIO0. So we'll activate that. And the black button is going to actually power on the ESP8266. So we'll press that. So now we just connected our chip. The next thing to do after waiting a couple of seconds is unground GPIO zero. So boom. So at this point, that chip should be in flashing mode. That's how easy this is supposed to be. Let's go ahead now and open up our flashing software. And I started using Node MCU Pi Flasher. So serial port for me is COM3. I'm going to put on the newest Tasmoda that I have, which is 831. Uh, and then here we go. And I always say yes. And let's flash. And as you can see, it is working. Let this run through. And while that's doing its thing, I'm going to get ready for the next step. So I might have been one of the very first people back in the day to mention that you can easily program your chips after they're flashed with Termite. Instead of connecting to the Wi-Fi SSID and doing like an ad hoc connection and programming it, you already have a serial connection. So you can program it through your serial port. And so I'll show you that here in just a second when this is done. Firmware is successfully flashed. Unplug, replug, or reset the device. So look, all we have to do, press the black button to power down the chip, and then power the chip back up. We're done with Pi Flasher. We can close that. Now we can go to Termite, and we're already connected to our serial interface here. I need to change it to um, COM3. Let's open this back up. There we go. All right, so if I press enter, you can see it's ready to accept commands. And I have a string I just saved to a text file and I'll put in the description of the video an example string and I'll have to blur out my SSID and password probably, but if I just paste in all my stuff, boom. It's just programmed that chip. So I just programmed my SSID, my password, and my MQTT broker and everything else. So you'll be able to see that this already has an IP address and is ready to connect to. So let's find that IP address. It'll be right in here somewhere. Yep. Right here, IP address. 1.118. All right. Now that we're done flashing our device, let's go ahead and open up the web portal. Termite said we have an IP address of 192.168.1.118. And there we go. So that's how fast and easy this was to program. And of course, since we're using Tasmoda and the Shelly 1 is a common module, it's already got Shelly 1 in here. And we'll just save that. And that'll reboot. So up to the latest version of Tasmoda, I've got this thing programmed and flashed at no time flat, and this box made it ridiculously easy. So I think the project was a success, and I hope you guys enjoyed the educational video and find some use for it. If you have any questions, be sure to ask them down in the comment section, and I'll try to answer them for you and everybody else. And if not, share the wealth, share the video, and I'll see you guys next time.